What's up guys? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Arcane Mage, level 100 talents, and glyphs. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that we're going to really be working with here. Let's start with glyphs because glyphs are a little bit easier to go through. Uh, I'm going to be showing you all the footage in the background, me messing around with a lot of the stuff as well. So just... If you need to rewatch it to kind of see how I'm doing a couple things, that's fine. Remember, we don't have any add-ons yet, so as we get add-ons, like tell me when I can track some procs. Obviously, um, you know the fluidity of my rotation will improve, and the more I practice. But the biggest changes that I'm seeing as far as glyphs go, uh, the glyph of arcane explosion is pretty much an essential glyph for arcane mages on any fight with AOE or any fight with adds because it extends the radius five yards. Uh, it's just a really, really nice, nice glyph to have. Uh, you're really going to use it a lot. Now, Glyph of Arcane Power will double the time that it goes, but it also doubles the cooldown time. Now, the reason that this Glyph is somewhat interesting is because it can really either screw you or make it really, really awesome. So, what you need to understand is that Invocation is gone, right? In the talent tree, Invocation is not a level 90 talent anymore. So, we're back to that old burn our mana down during our burn phase and then Evocate back up and that's how we're gonna do it, okay? So that's how we're gonna get our mana back. We still have our mana gem, so keep that in mind as well. That we have mana gem and evocate, and that's gonna help us keep our DPS high. Now, as far as the level 100 talents go, really quickly, let's go over them real quick. Um, Overpower does not work the same way as kindling does for fire mages, okay? So on my fire talent video that you guys saw, um, what happens in, in fire is every time you cast fireball, it will actually reduce the cooldown of your combustion so you can get your combustion up again quicker. This makes a huge difference, okay? This really, really matters. Overpowered, every time you cast arcane missiles, it extends your arcane power. Again, this can either really, really be good or really, really be bad, depending on your procs, okay? This is, the arcane mage, the only thing that I'm concerned about right now is it's going to be very, very proc-centric. Uh, because of this, Encanter's Flow may not be your best bet. You may want to stick with that Rune of Power so you know that you have your 15% spell power increase. You may just want to deal with it. Um, we do have Ice Flows to mitigate. Uh, we do ha still have our Arcane Barrage. We do still have Arcane Explosion. Uh, so we do have some things that we can do on the move, but Encanter's Flow, coupling that with Overpowered is going to be a very interesting, interesting concept. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. Now, having said that, again, like I said in the Fire Mage uh, talent guide, the Prismatic Crystal, I love the idea of it. I hate the uptime of it. It is a very small uptime. It's not really what I was thinking it was going to be, so I'm kind of on the fence about this a little bit, so keep that in mind. Now, the other one is your arcane, kind of like your arcane meteor, all right? So you're going to have this arcane ball that you can throw out. Think of it like Frost Bomb or uh, Frost Nova for a Frost Mage, okay? So it's the same idea, except what it's going to do is it's going to travel up to 40 yards out, just like your Frost, uh, your frost Bomb would. I think it's called Frost Bomb, isn't it? Frost Orb, Frozen Orb, sorry. Frozen Orb, that's the, that's the word I was looking for. Think of it like Frozen Orb for Arcane. So what you're going to do is you're going to cast it out. It's going to go out to 40 yards. Every time it deals damage to a target, it's going to give you an arcane charge stack. Now, again, very, very proc centric. The nice thing about this is if you get a lot of ads that come out, you throw this out, you're immediately at four stacks, you're immediately spamming that arcane explosion, and you are doing an absolute metric ton of damage. Uh, because remember, we do still have Nether Tempest. Now, Nether Tempest is amazing. It is absolutely the best dot out there for mages. That is the main reason you want to play Arcane is because that Nether Tempest is a truck. It is an absolute monster. And especially the more ads are, the better. Bring it on. Nether Tempest does it all. It's one cooldown and you're done. You don't have to think about anything. There's no cast time. Nether Tempest is the shit, okay? It is just absolutely by far our best mage dot. So couple that AoE with Arcane Explosion AoE and Arcane does some serious AoE. Now, that Arcane Orb that you throw out, you you do want to use that on AOE fights. Again, I'm not so sure how well it's going to work on single target fights. Same thing with the crystal. The crystal, I really think, needs some reworking. If the crystal goes live the way it is now, it is going to be very, very, very seldomly used. It is just not very good. The uptime's not there to warrant you not taking one of the other spells. Remember, when you're going through talents, guys, the biggest thing that you want to do in theory crafting is what is it up against? Do the other two still hold better and still net me more either mobility, more DPS, 
or just more control over when I'm doing my damage. And really, to be honest, Prismatic Crystal is just not good enough compared to the other two in any of the trees, okay? I've played all three of them. Any of the trees, it is not comparable, so do be aware of that. Now, I did play around in the talents with Supernova a little bit. I don't like it. I don't like that. I don't like any of those. I just don't think they're as good as having that dot. Uh, that dot just seems to be a little bit more powerful than the other ones, and I don't want them to nerf the dots. I want them to make the other ones more appealing. Uh, so keep that in mind going forward. That's the main reason that I like them. Now, uh, for as far as the arcane reputation goes, again, it is very, very simple, guys. It is so simple. Uh, they did not make this harder. It is going to be purely down to mana management and movement management. As long as you have an add-on like player mana percent to watch your mana bar, and then tell me when to watch your arcane charges, arcane missile charges again, because you can hold up to three with the drain ore perks, watch that, because that's going to be really interesting. Now, if you're doing a fight where you're bursting tons of damage and you got that lust at the beginning of the fight, you've got your pre-pot going, all your trinkets are proc then I can see overpowered becoming very good. That's when you're extending that arcane power with all those missiles, get up your tier three stacks, and then just unleash hell. Now, the only problem with that is, again, it's very proc-centric. So right now, guys, overall thoughts on the arcane mage. In a really good spot, does need some tweaking, a little bit of tweaking. I would give it a B plus right now. It is very, very good. It's very easy to pick up and play and do decent damage. It's going to be very interesting to see how many people can really master that movement management, master that mana management as it pertains to the fights in Warlords of Draenor. So that's really where you're gonna separate the really great players from the okay players, is how well they can continue to use these talents to make it worth their while. So I'm curious to see how that works out. Uh, but go ahead and take a look at the rest of this video, guys. Hope you guys liked it. Thank you for watching, and as always, We'll see you in the next one.